A war is coming. A war over the very nature of man and the destiny of human civilization. In fact, we are already in the midst of this war. As our technological abilities rapidly accelerate, this war also accelerates. The rhetoric of people like Klaus Schwab dominates our collective vision of the future. A future in which mankind lives like rats in their pods, subservient to a surveillance state, drugging themselves with digital fantasy worlds. Opposing this vision, we have conservatism, which serves as a defense against this dystopian future. But ultimately, it will fail, since it has no creative vision for our future and no solution for the technologies which are coming. But in the founding myth of Western civilization, in the myth of Prometheus, we find a third way. The future of a Promethean civilization has endless possibilities. It is a future in which technology is used to enhance humanity rather than enslave us, in which the Earth is not the tomb of our species, but the birthplace of an intergalactic empire of supermen spreading life and beauty throughout the stars. In the struggle for the future of man, three fundamental conceptions of civilization are at play. The anti-natural conception, the conservative conception, and the Promethean conception. The ideologies which are predominant in the West today are all premised on the anti-natural view. Whether it's the World Economic Forum or the leftism of universities, the fundamental premise of the anti-natural perspective is that nature itself is structured wrong. The natural order of life is evil, cruel, and unfair. Therefore, nature's hierarchies need to be leveled, even inverted. And the same must be done with the instincts and drives of man's inner nature. This worldview is fundamentally anti-life. It goes against all which strengthens and promotes life. Everything from the natural roles of men and women to what is naturally admired in a person, such as beauty, strength, and health, is inverted. Anti-natural ideologies restrict life, weaken life, and ultimately destroy a civilization. These ideologies used to be a luxury reserved for the most extreme ascetic cults, or the most decadent elites of declining empires. Only in these obscure pockets could you find life so exhausted and disfigured that it would turn so violently away from life. The danger today is that the whole Western world has been consumed by an anti-natural worldview. With technology advancing so rapidly, its misuse could create a civilization which permanently transforms and disfigures man on a biological level, a dystopia which could not be escaped. To put it concisely, the very nature of man and the future of humanity is at stake. Resisting the anti-natural worldview predominant in the West is conservatism which is premised on the idea that the purpose of life is to live morally, and the purpose of civilization is to establish and sustain a moral order. This worldview preserves and protects life, and acts as a buffer against anti-naturalism, but its fatal flaw is that it is not creative. Since the ultimate premise of a conservative civilization is preserving a moral order in accordance with moral laws, it has no active vision for the future. It can only attempt to preserve, to conserve, its moral order by integrating new technologies and ways of life. This is why the history of the conservative right has been a slow, leftward drift, and why, with the rapid speed of technological change, it will be unable to adapt and ultimately fail. Ideally, conservatism should play a significant role in a society, serving as a foundation to build from and preserving the traditional values and customs of a society. But today, more than ever, a society must have an active vision of the future, which can seize new technologies and use them to enhance and elevate human life and civilization. The answer lies in the founding myth of Western civilization, the myth of Prometheus. In Aeschylus's Prometheus Bound, Prometheus says, I found them mindless, but made them intelligent and masters of their minds. For humans in the beginning had eyes but saw to no purpose. They had ears but did not hear. 
like the shapes of dreams they dragged through their long lives and muddled everything haphazardly. They did not know how to build brick houses to face the sun, nor how to work in wood. They lived beneath the earth like swarming ants in sunless caves. In the myth of Prometheus, mankind begins in a miserable, insectile state. But Prometheus gives mankind fire and teaches them the arts of the gods, the metallurgy of Hephaestus, the music of Apollo, the theater of Dionysus. Prometheus's gift of fire, which is symbolic of both the gift of higher consciousness, of light, and of technology, and the artistic, innovative will which can put it to use, allows mankind to make themselves like the gods. Thus, the Promethean conception of civilization is that human life, by default, tends towards the lower, towards the swarming, disposable, undifferentiated life of insects, and that the purpose of civilization is to allow us to elevate ourselves above this state of miserable purposelessness and make ourselves like the gods. The purpose of Promethean civilization is not to negate nature, or to impose a moral order upon nature. It is to create beauty, to create power, to create supermen who rival the gods. When mankind receives the gift of fire and learns the arts of civilization, they are no longer subservient to the gods like cattle. Instead, they gain a reciprocal relationship through sacrifice, which Prometheus teaches to them. They become like a lower caste on the divine hierarchy, emulating and reflecting the power and grace of the gods. In human, all to human, Nietzsche wrote, in the Greek stage of religion, especially in the relationship to the Olympian gods, there is the thought of a coexistence of two castes, one nobler and more powerful, the other less noble. But according to their origin, both belong together somehow and are of one kind. They need not be ashamed before one another. They saw, as it were, only the reflection of the most successful specimens of their own caste, that is, an ideal, not a contrast to their own nature. They felt related to the gods. There was a reciprocal interest, a kind of sumakia. The premise of anti-natural civilization is that man and nature are fundamentally corrupt and evil, and must be completely reformed and restructured. The premise of conservatism is that man and nature are fallen, and must be submitted to a moral order. The premise of Promethean civilization is that man is a bridge between animal and god, and it is our imperative to strive for the higher, to strive for the divine, to strive to become superhuman, just as we once raised ourselves above the animals. Though it may seem that man is on the verge of being swallowed by ugliness and filth, Remember that it would only take a single generation to restore a Promethean vision of the destiny of man. We are part of a Promethean project stretching back to the ancient Greeks, and perhaps even beyond them into the dawn of time, when men walked beneath a red sun with beasts and gods. And if we have the will and vision to seize the destiny of man in our hands, this project can stretch into the remote reaches of the future. I am certain that one day, men like demigods will walk planets of sand and ice in the remote corners of our universe, building shining cities of steel and stone. So set your eyes on the stars, and remember, though there is a worm in you, in you there is also a god. In you there is also the fire of creation.